May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 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 Please take a seat. So when I was growing up, there was the question that went around, what functionally differentiates human beings from other animals? What makes us, at a really basic level, different from other creatures? And people suggested perhaps language. And then everyone said, well, if you stop and listen, what you can hear is a lot of language out there. And if you stop now, you might even hear the birds. That's language. It's probably go away, this is my territory, <laughs> or check me out, I'm handsome, but it's language. So then people said, well, no, maybe it's tool using, which is great, except for there are all sorts of animals that use tools. There are chimpanzees and uh, ants and all sorts of things. So tool using isn't it. One of the things that is kind of perhaps suggested that human beings do, that no other animal does, is that it tells stories. And we tell an awful lot of stories. Some of them are historically and scientifically accurate stories. Some of them are fictional. But we tell stories. And we tell stories to make meaning. To, to try to kind of impose a sense of order on the world. And um, many of our stories fall into one of two categories. One is what's sometimes the term used as myth. Now, a myth explains why we are where we are. It's, 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 a, it's in a sense, a history-esque story. Um, but it explains why we are where we are today. So, there are two that you probably know quite well that in this sense are myth. There's the story uh, of the Big Bang. You, you know that story, you know... Singularity, expansion, Big Bang, time, 13.4 billion years, give or take. And here we are. Now, I'm not saying that that's not an accurate story, but it, what it's a, it is, is it's a story that tells us how we got to where we got. There's another one, Genesis. That's a story of how God created the universe, and it explains our position within that and how we relate to the rest of creation. It's, they are both equally myth. They explain how we got to where we are today. But there's another type of story, and, one of, and these are wisdom stories. They're stories that try and help you navigate moving forward. One of my favourite, kind of more modern ones, is a, uh, I'm going to put it in inverted commas, kids movie. That's in inverted commas, because it's not, for, well, I mean, kids can watch it. But it's, it's, it's for adults. It's for people who, who are trying to learn, to grow. And it's, a, it's an animated one by DreamWorks, uh, and it's called Inside Out. And if you've got any sort of anyone in your family who's got it, I thoroughly recommend it. It's a great movie. It's about a, a young girl learning to navigate the complexities of an inner life and, that, and emotions, and how sometimes sadness isn't always a bad thing. It can, in fact, be a powerful thing. It's a great movie. Watch it. Wonderful wisdom story helping people navigate their way through kind of emotionally complex times. Now, if you've got a system, and that system includes Jesus, you probably need to go back and have another look at that system, because it's probably not very comprehensive. And Jesus' parables, we often try and understand them in those two contexts. Are they myth? As in, do they explain how we got to where we did? Or are they wisdom explaining how to navigate forward? And I want to look at these two stories, these two parables that Jesus tells, as if they were wisdom stories, and then I'm going to ask you if you think they're particularly good wisdom stories. I'll give you a hint. I don't think they are. <laughs> but just for a moment, because a lot of people do this with Jesus' parables. So the first one is the story of the kingdom of God. He says it's like a seed. And he says, you, you go and you scatter the seed, and then, you know, night and day the seed just grows, all by itself, and it just grows. And if you stop and think about it as a way to navigate through the world, that's really non-functional. <laughs> you know, it's like, look, it doesn't matter what you do, uh, it doesn't matter how hard you work or don't work. 
What you do has no impact on the world. You might as well just stay home and watch telly. Now, I mean, some days, yes, that's a really, you know, it's been a long week. Uh, but, as, as a way to navigate through the world, does that sound like a good idea to be, is that a good story to be telling people? It doesn't matter what you do, it's all pointless. No. Well, let's look at the next one. The next one is, again, seed uh, grows, mustard bush, and birds come from all over, the, all over the place. And the story is basically, you're a bird, and there's going to be other birds, and the nice thing to do is make space for the birds on the branches, which is lovely. But if you think about all these birds that come from different tribes, and human beings are very tribal creatures, and one of the things we tend to be bad at tribally is making space for others. Because when we do that, we find ourselves knocked off the branch. Is that a good way to navigate? Is that a good way to navigate through the world? You know, this, that's not the that story that business tells. It's not the story that anyone. So uh, these don't make very good wisdom stories. They're certainly not myth, because they just explain farming. This is how we learn to farm. <laughs> Rather, Jesus' stories act as the mental equivalent of a stumbling block. They act as a way to, to make us catch ourselves in our navigation through life. What they do is they, they refresh us and they open our eyes to a different way of seeing. If we think it's all about our own labour, if we think it's all about what we do that matters, and Jesus tells the story of a farmer and his labour is not what matters, then the question becomes, what matters? What is it that we are? Because what we do doesn't, in a sense. So what is it that we are? That matters. And if you matter because of who you are, and if I matter because of who I am, then even those we will never meet matter to God because of who they are. And we need to start to treat and see others as being as worthy of God and at God's love as we are, which is not particularly. And yet still we are loved, and yet still they are loved. That mustard seed. The first time I came across this idea is, was the question, where do you think those birds come from? If the kingdom of God is like a mustard bush, or a mustard tree, depending on your translation, although I don't think mustard grows on trees, but anyway. Where do those birds come from? And the answer is all over the place, including places we might never have been to or seen. And it's not going to be comfortable for us. But the kingdom of God is not a tree that is home for just one type of bird. The kingdom of God is not a tree that is home just for my flock of birds. And if I want to be a full participant in it, then it's up to me to make sure that there is space on the branches for birds that are different to me. That there is space in the shade for all those that would seek to shelter from the burning sun. The, these parables are not wisdom stories. They don't help us navigate our way through the world. They are stumbling blocks that make us open our eyes to the kingdom of God. That make us stop and think for a moment, how is it that God wants us to act, react, and be? In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.